Hello everyone and welcome to Jackal Educational Channel. So today we are going to discuss one of the very important topic that is statistics. Many students are having the fear of statistics and they most often leave this unit and skip this unit for preparation during environmental science examination. But today we will discuss very basic questions which are coming in net environmental science examination and the fear of statistics with go away. So let's start today's video. The first question we will take as the arithmetic mean of the following data is what? So I guess you all will be able to solve this question. So the simple thing to find the arithmetic mean is to take all the sum of all the given values divided by the number of values. So we will add 5 plus 6 plus 2 plus 9 plus 8 and then we will divide it by 5 that is number of given. So number of given item is 5 so we will divide it by 5 and we will get the answer as 6 so you should calculate on your own and check whether it is correct or wrong so here correct option will be option number C let's move to the next question the next question is the brother of arithmetic mean yes this is geometric mean so geometric mean kis tarah nikalte hain hum batate hain ek step mein niklega so the step for calculating geometric mean is root over of number of given values so we have to multiply all the values inside the root that is 1 into 4 into 16 and we have to take that much root how much of data is given so here 3 data is given so we have to take the third root of the following multiplication that means we have to take the third root of 64 so 64 it will be coming after multiplying this so third root of 64 is 4 that means 4 into 4 into 4 is 64 and here the geometric mean of the data is 4 so for example if you could have given two data then we could have taken the second root that is the multipl multiplying 1 and 4 if 16 is not there and we will take the second root of 4 that is 2 so similarly we will do for all the given data let's move to the next question so the next mean is the harmonic mean so this is the youngest mean of all the means i will let you know why i am telling this as youngest mean so how to calculate the harmonic mean of the following data so harmonic mean nikalne ke liye ek formula hai number of observation that is here it is number of observation is 3 divided by the reciprocal of each number that is reciprocal of each observation so observations are 5 so you have to take the reciprocal of 5 that is 1 by 5 plus reciprocal of 10 is 1 by 10 similarly reciprocal of 20 is 1 by 20 so by solving this we will get the value as 8.57 so by this way we will be able to calculate the harmonic mean that is first of all number of observation in numerator divided by the reciprocal of each number so adding all the reciprocals of each value we will get the harmonic mean let's move to the next question the next question is for a given set of data the comparison of geometric harmonic and arithmetic mean will be how much so what you will do we have to find the geometric mean harmonic mean and arithmetic mean of the following data and then you have to conclude that whether harmonic mean is greater or geometric mean is less or arithmetic mean is more but you no need to go for calculating these many things if you are having the concept clear yes the concept is the universal concept is harmonic mean is lesser than geometric mean and geometric mean is lesser than the arithmetic mean so the sequence will be h greater than g greater than x so that's why i told the harmonic mean is the youngest of all the mean so remember this thing so that you won't be able to calculate all this thing and waste your time let's move to the next question the next question is for a given set of data the median value will be what so median apne to bachpan se padha hoga statistics mein but important thing is i have to tell you that and you go and click 8 as the correct option then it will be wrong because Every time aapko yaad rakhna hai ki you have to arrange the given data set in the increasing order. It will be 5, then it will be followed by 8, 9, 10, 20 and 100. So like this you have to arrange this in ascending order. Then you have to select the mid value that is the median which is 10 in this answer. But for example if some data set is having even number of data then what you will do? So you will not be able to find the mid value. For example if here let us assume there is no 100 so in this case where the even number of data are given you have to arrange this as i said every time you have to arrange so 5 8 9 10 20 and 50 you will arrange like this and then 
what you have to do you have to take two mid values that is they are the mid position values and take their average so 10 plus 9 is 19 the average of 19 will be 9.5 which will be the median value of this data so now you have learned how to find the median value of even and odd data set value let's move to the next question the next question is for a given set of data find the mode value so mode is actually the number which is having the most repeated value or most repeated data so again as i have said you have to arrange this in the increasing order so three four so three is twice so i have to write three twice three three four four five six and is given one two three times so we have to write nine three times so from here we can conclude that 9 is the number which is having the most number of repeated value in this given set of data. So 9 will be the mode value of this data. So 9 will be the correct option. Let's move to the next question. The next question is the result of a statistical test denoted as P shall be interpreted as follows. So what is the correct interpretation of that statistical test? So here the correct option will be option number a yes if the p value that is the result of the statistical data is lesser than 0.05 then we have to reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternate hypothesis similarly if the p value is greater than 0. Point, then we have to accept the null hypothesis and reject the alternate hypothesis so this is very important note it down let's move to the next question Next question is, the third moment about the mean of distribution of a set of observation is a measure of what? So here, the correct option will be option number B, skewness. Yes, we will know what is first moment, second moment and third moment of mean of distribution. Let's move to the next slide. So here, the first moment is described by the mean which describes the central value. Second moment is given by variance and standard deviation so you should note standard deviation also is second moment and the third moment is the skewness so the skewness describes the asymmetry of the given data and next the fourth moment is the kurtosis which describes the peakedness so this is one of the most frequently asked question i will request you to write all the concept which we are discussing in this video in your notes so let's move to the next question the next question is the mean and standard deviation of a binomial distribution are 9 and 1 that means mean is 9 and the standard deviation is 1 so we have to calculate the first moment of the distribution so some students will go and hit the mean option as correct but that will be wrong yes we have studied now about the types of moment and mean was the first moment but here specifically in binomial distribution the first moment will be option number c 0 so no matter what the value is given, the correct option will be option number C0. So please note it down. Let's move to the next question. The next question is, the 90th percentile value for the given data is how much? So to find the percentile value, let's see how to solve this. So to get the percentile value, there is a formula. So the formula is, n multiplied by p divided by 100 so before that i would like to tell you that here the data is arranged so it is in increasing order but if it is not there so please note you have to make it in the increasing order so what is n p and 100 we'll know here so n means what percentile we are going to calculate so hum kiske bare mein nikalna hai? we are calculating 90th percentile so we'll put n as 90 multiplied by p so what is p here p is number of values present given in the data so here total of nine values are given so here p will be nine and divided by hundred so from this we will get the 90th percentile value how i will tell you after doing this calculation we will get the value as 8.10 so what is this 8.10 is it the 90th percentile value no this is not the 90th percentile value but this term that is 8.108th term is the 90th percentile value so iska matlab hai so what is 8th term here the 8th term is 7.5 so by adding 0.1th term so it will be something in between 7.5 and 8 so here in the options we can see here 
the in between 7.5 and 8 the given value is 7.75 so the correct option will be 7.75 as the 98th percentile value if in calculation we would have got 8 as the option 8 as the answer then we could have selected the 8th term that is 7.5 as the correct option but here as it is 8.10 that is bit more than the 8th term we will select 7.75 let's move to the next question the next question is in a one way ANOVA that is analysis of variance explained variance was found to be 8 and the unexplained variance was found to be 3.67 so the F ratio is how much so this is very simple it will be solved within second because the formula of F ratio is explained variance divided by the unexplained variance so here what we have to do we have to simply divide 8 by 3.67 and by solving this we will get the answer as 2.18 so remember this F ratio is explained variance divided by unexplained variance let's move to the next question the next question is graphically depicting a group of numerical data through their quartile is known as what so what kind of graphical representation it is so here the correct option will be option number b box plot kind of representation so i dekhte hain iska matlab kya hai so i have given certain pictures to make you understand that what is a box plot and what is a histogram and what is frequency polygon and pie chart box plot is also a kind of representing the data in the vert vertical columns that we can see but here the main important thing is the quartile so this range is known as quartile which is also called as percentile value and here in histogram we don't have the quartile value and you can see this is histogram and if the histogram is represented in another way that is by joining all the midpoint of the bars in histogram then we will get a polygon shape which will be called as frequency polygon and pie chart we all know that it is the circular representation of graphical analysis the next question is the mean of Poisson's distribution is 8 so it is given as 8 its standard deviation is how much so if you don't know what is Poisson what is Poisson's distribution what is standard deviation but you know the formula then you will be able to solve this so just remember the formula that is to find the mean of a Poisson distribution which is given the standard deviation is the square root of the mean that means if we find the square root of the mean of Poisson distribution that is here given as 8 then we will get the standard deviation that is 2 root 2 in this case so option number b will be the correct option let's move to the next question the next question is a chi square distribution with 10 degree of freedom has a variance value of what so here degree of freedom is given but how to calculate the variance to find the variance of the value of a chi distribution we just have to multiply twice time the degree of freedom so here as it is given 10 so 2 multiplied by 10 is equal to 20 which will be the variance value of the this distribution option number b let's move to the next question next question is the mean and median of a moderately skewed distribution are 21 and 20 respectively so we have to find the mode value so how to solve this let's see there is a formula to solve this one so you need to remember this formula that is mode is equal to 3 median minus 2 mean to get the mean median mode of a moderately skewed distribution so here we have to find the mode that means mode is equal to 3 median median is given as 20 and the mean is given as 21 so by solving this we will get the answer as 18 so 18 will be the mode value which is in the option A correct option let's move to the next question so before moving to the next question one more concept you have to remember yes in a binomial distribution we know that how to find the variance standard deviation and mean of the distribution for that the formula is we have to know n p and q so here n means the trials so number of observation or number of trials P is the percentage of success or the probability of success 
Q is the probability of failure. To find the mean of the binomial distribution, we have to simply multiply n with p, that is np will give the mean value, npq will give the variance and the root over of variance that we all know is standard deviation. So root over of npq will give us the standard deviation of the binomial distribution. So kindly note it down. Let's move to the next question. So the next question is, if the standard deviation that is SD of a population is given 20 and the standard error of mean is 4, then what is the sample size? So we have to know one simple formula that is standard error is given. So we have to find standard error that is given by standard deviation divided by root over of n. So what is n here? n is the sample size or the number of population. So here what it is given, here standard deviation is given, standard error is given, we just need to find the sample size that is n. So what we have to do, so we will take n here root over of n is equal to standard deviation divided by standard error. So when we divide 20 divided by 4 as given in the question, we will get the answer as 5. So it is not the answer because it is the root over of n is 5. So what is n? n is square of 5 that is 25 is the correct option. So remember standard error ka jo formula hai wo hai standard deviation divided by root n that is the population size. Let's move to the next question. The next question is from the probability section. So there are two events that is A and B which are mutually exclusive. And if the probability of getting A is 0.5 and probability of getting B is 0.2 then what is the probability of getting both A and B that is given by P, A and B. So to find this there is very simple formula and the formula is P, A and B that is probability of getting both A and B is equal to probability of getting A multiplied by the probability of getting B. So as you have given I am not able to write completely. So you should know that probability of A and B is probability of A multiplied by the probability of B which is 0.5 multiplied by 0.2 So the next question is which is incorrect as per the kurtosis of distribution So here the correct option will be option number D none of these because all are correct option none of them is incorrect So how to know this so you have to remember one thing when the kurtosis is less than 0 it is called as platycurtic and when the kurtosis is greater than 0, it is called as leptocurtic and when the kurtosis value is 0, then it is called as mesocurtic. So note it down and write all these things in your notes. So this is the part 1 of this mega series which is are dealing with statistics. If you want the part 2 then comment me in the comment section. See you guys in our next video. All the best to everyone and don't forget to subscribe the channel if you haven't subscribed till now.